Welcome back. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has virtually inaugurated the Skyroot Infinity Campus in uh, uh, Shamshabad in Telangana. This is seen as a major milestone for India's growing private space sector. During the event, he also unveiled Vikram 1, the country's first private commercial rocket, and described the facility as India's largest private rocket factory. Addressing the team, the Prime Minister praised Skyroot's uh, young engineers and innovators, calling their work a reflection of the talent and ambition driving India's space journey. He said this achievement would inspire India's youth. The Prime Minister further reaffirmed the centre's commitment to supporting India's space ambitions, pointing to the rapid growth of space startups as a direct result of reforms and government initiatives. He urged engineers, designers, coders and scientists to leverage the new opportunities opening up in the sector. Skyroot's Vikram 1 is a landmark achievement in India's private space flight story. And as the country's first privately developed commercial launch vehicle, Vikram 1 is designed to carry small satellites into low Earth orbit with high reliability and rapid turnaround time. Built with advanced carbon uh, composite structures and powered by Skyroot's innovative solid propulsion systems, the rocket represents a major technological leap for an Indian startup. The unveiling of Vikram 1 at the new Skyroot Infinity campus, which is India's largest private rocket manufacturing facility, signals the growing confidence, capability, and competitive uh, spirit of India's private space sector in the global launch market. We'll talk about this with our guests. Uh, joining us at this point in time, first up is uh, Mr. Kishore Tallam, Chief Financial Officer of Skyroot Aerospace. Mr. Tallam, I'll speak with you first. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Well, first hope you up, can hear. Uh, yes, first up, very many congratulations. The Prime Minister, of course, extremely elated about what he's seen today. What has been your reaction to the government's support predominantly when it comes to the space sector? Yeah, it's a quite a good support what we have received uh, from the government. So uh, both from uh, a Department of Space, In Space and ISRO, it has been ex uh, excellent support. So uh, so uh, when the initial policies were uh, given in 2020, where it was open for pi uh, private sector, that itself is a big milestone. Thereafter, uh, so uh, Skyroot was the first company to enter into an MOU with ISRO to access all the facilities. From there, uh, so it has been a very fantastic support for us. Uh, so over through across. So and the support what we are getting for uh, launch of Vikram one also has been uh, very great. So all special thanks to government and uh, in space and ISRO teams as well. Hmm. What does this mean, you know, for uh, the confidence in the private industry to take leaps in, in, in space technology? Yeah, so uh, for any industry to grow, so private sector also plays an equal contribution, right? So and our Honorable Prime Minister also believes that opening this sector to private industry can put uh, India also onto the map of global player, uh, global industry in space tech. And uh, we as a Skyroot, uh, so we are taking every step to achieve the vision of uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Modi, right? Uh, so we are gearing up significantly for our launches. So government is looking to do at least close to 50 launches per annum uh, five years from now. And uh, as a Skyroot uh, into private launch segment, we intend to contribute our part uh, in achieving that mission as well. Mm. Uh, what do you think this means, uh, you know, for the world at large? You know, the companies uh, uh, that are not as advanced, the countries rather, that are not as advanced when it comes to launching satellites and, uh, you know, taking up space technologies around the world. Do you think their traffic into India is going to grow? Yeah, of course. Uh, so there will be a one more reliable player across the globe. So right now, so uh, in a private segment in space tech, so uh, hardly a couple of countries are mm -hmm. able to do it. Right. So once uh, uh, companies like Skyroot uh, gets into that board, so there will be a lot of options available for the global players. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that gives a lot of opportunity for companies in India as well. Mr. Talam, appreciate you joining us and congratulations once again. Dr. Surinder Pal, former director of ISRO is with us. Dr. B.R. Guru Prasad, former ISRO scientist, joins us on the show. Group captain Dr. V. N. Ja, former ja joint director of DRDO is also with us. And last but not the least, Wing Commander S. Sudhakran, former Indian Air Force officer, joins us on the program as well. Group Captain Jha, I'll begin with you, sir. Uh, this is again, like I said to Mr. Talam as well, a big leap. Uh, and it is a leap in the right direction. And what does this mean for the private sector that has been looking to the public sector for support? Well, private sectors in the space uh, uh, technologies must thank PM Modi to open this sector to the private agencies first. 
and then <clears throat> i must also compl uh, uh, compliment to isro because they have been doing some sort of hand holding at, at least for the startup agencies where they have not been left into the lurch and to compete with the global giants so this is a good sign to start with as far as the sky route is uh, concerned we have uh, i think uh, have a couple of discussion we have had couple of discussion in the past also and i compliment them to come up at this stage where pm modi himself has inaugurated their uh, facility but uh, look uh, it is yet for the sky route to put any uh, the payload or any satellite into the orbit they have done suborbital flight uh, that doesn't serve the purpose that is nowhere close to an orbital flight and when were we launch a satellite it has to remain in that uh, orbit whether it is uh, leo whether it is the meo or whether it is the uh, you know the the uh, the, the the stable geostationary uh, orbit so it has to remain there and kairot is yet to come up anywhere close to that but i wish them that way they have progressed their effort till now their first uh, stage motor their second stage motor third stage motor has been fired and successfully so all this we have seen now it is only the 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 entire experiment in toto that has to happen with the type of payload the satellite will be having whether it is single or the dual the type of technology they are bearing i believe they are using the solid uh, fuel motor first stage second stage and third stage and then there will be the uh, liquid motor so uh, best wishes for them because all these are already proven solid mo motor fuel sttb is already uh, proven isro has been using it liquid uh, they have been using it both uh, the 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 main ceo and the his deputy both are ex isro so they all have this injection technology they know about it separation stage separation whether it is the uh, motor stage or the 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 thermal uh, uh, shield that the payload has got all this separation technology they are all aware of so it is all putting one by one pieces together i'm sure they will be able to do it successfully and we we'll look for the day when all these are done properly and they have a success of course it is going to be a small rocket launching a limited payload but then you know the, the first step is always welcome when it succeeds and thereafter you keep on building building onto the technology that you have got so wish them all the best from this stage and we will be looking forward that when they launch that first uh, come up special satellite or whether it is indian or from abroad into the injection into the orbit and then that continues performing thereafter so that will be the uh, you know the <laughs> in the history of skyroot wish them all the best from here vinit uh dr pal your first thoughts on india's growing private sector and how the how the government continuously incessantly has supported it first of all i wish to congratulate uh, sky root that the honorable prime minister has spoken very high of them and inaugurated their facility now let me come to about sky root they have got a experienced persons from isro their guide uh, persons who are guiding them i know them they are also from isro and the technology which they have used is the modern technology like you know making the motors out of the graphite composite graphites then they have used the 3d printing and the fuel which they are going to use is mmh and nto both so they will get the good efficiency isp which we saw must be around 300 then their aim which uh, i see is that uh, by 26 that's next year they will launch in some a satellite into the leo orbit and their uh, aim is to go up to 500 kilometers so th 300 to 500 kilometers depending on whether it's a uh, high inclination satellite Uh, or sun synchronous orbit it mass uh, total mass of the satellite will change but wa what i am happy is that they will be uh, we will be able to launch with their help you know anybody with the defense or meteorology department or isro or anybody they can launch a satellite on demand and that's the greatest thing when we were working on aryabhat baskara etc we used to hear that the russians could launch the satellite on demand and we used to wonder how they could do it you know small satellites for at that time only photography was there for the uh, spy purposes now here on demand if the defense wants they can launch a satellite 
and sky uh, another company is coming you know so i mean there are at least two companies are there agni cool will be another one so uh, if the two companies are coming plus isro has already transferred the technology for uh, small satellite launch vehicles so you can see that india will be having a good business as far as business is concerned as far as strategies are concerned if the defense wants a satellite on demand it will be launched if uh, uh, you know metal the med department wants a satellite on uh, demand it can be launched to monitor some conditions like cyclone etc in those pro scientific experiments these can be done mm-hmm. so rockets are will be available that's a great thing i must congr- uh, I mean, congratulate them and uh, i know some of their uh, you know persons who are guiding them from isro they had been my colleague so i know they are very competent persons they have come through hard way and the to- total technology and the knowledge has been transferred to them and the tech today india let us uh, imagine the, the when we were developing in 70s the rockets you know rs125 350 and then uh, of course we get to uh, slv3 and the aslv etc we went in a long way we did not have machines even the cnc machines came later on the skyroot is uh, making the rockets the complex nozzles the total thing with the 3d printing the great thing so we must appreciate i congratulate the skyroot i congratulate the country and i also congratulate isro and in space for hand holding thank you very much all right fair enough uh, dr uh, guru prasad uh, so what would you like to say it's a momentous occasion for india's uh, a uh, space ecosystem the private sector of course is going to take uh, a lot of points home when it comes to uh, uh, you know investments or rather even seeking investments from uh, within india and beyond uh good evening to all the panelists and to all of you and uh, you know uh, yes l- let us congratulate the skyroot okay no doubt about it and the fact that uh, the prime minister himself came and inaugurated uh, Uh, their facility as well as unveiled their Vikram One rocket shows the uh, kind of importance the government attaches. As I understand from open sources that uh, uh, Skyroot Aerospace has already raised ninety-five million dollars or something like that in investment, in fact, in funds. So that augurs very well. But look at the yeah, it looks uh, quite promising for the private sector. Look at the government. in 2020 it thought about privatizing uh, privatizing in the sense bringing in private sector on a large scale into the indian space ecosystem earlier isro was doing everything then now the government uh, invited the private sector and it is not only just inviting nobody would come it opened the isro facilities for use by them hand holding and regulating for them it it uh, created in space and for commercializing the space technologies already developed by isro nsl new space india limited they created and you know they have announced space policy in 2023 so all these things are going a long way in helping the private sector in inspiring them and in making them uh, more enthusiastic about entering into the space ecosystem see if uh, india has enormous capacity okay in our most capability actually in the domain of space whether it is in the rockets with uh, launch vehicles whether it is in the satellites whether it is in the ground systems or whether it is in applications related technologies but isro was not able to do everything so in order to significantly enhance our uh, contribution to the global space economy the government thought out very rightly that is the reason why it brought in the private sector and it it uh, 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 in the sense uh, the isro has been uh, asked to do certain things like development of high technologies planetary exploration and gaganyaan and such things now the government since it has given so much of importance for the private sector look at uh, pslv Uh, the the PSLV rocket, one of them, which is entirely realized in the private sector, is going to be launched shortly. At the same time, the prime minister himself came and inaugurated uh, the facility, uh, of course, remotely of a startup, and 
unveiled their rocket shows the importance the government attaches all these things should do well in, not only in encouraging the private sector but in bringing in funds for them when you have a strong backup from the government naturally even the investors they will also feel more uh, optimistic so from that point of view it is very good for the private sector but vikram 1 is a launch vehicle which is capable of taking the satellites to orbit vikram s has already been launched but you know the thing is only the there is a difference between orbital velocity and uh, uh, simply taking a, sp uh, a rocket into space that is what has been already demonstrated but even in this regard stage separation and guidance of a rocket is no small thing they have done a lot means yes i appreciate them and i congratulate them and i wish them well no doubt about it but uh, look at the way in which uh, they are uh, as dr paul mentioned just now they have been guided guided by people who have enormous experience while they were in isro so all these things others well for uh, our uh, private startups either in terms of uh, uh, raising right, funds or in terms of progressing still right, further so we, we, we do have a paucity of time i also want to get a response a quick response from wing commander sudhakaran on this uh, important feat as well wing commander sudhakaran uh thank you uh, india stands at an inspiring moment in its technology journey under the leadership of a prime minister and with the extraordinary commitment of institutions like isro we have demonstrated that when india decides to lead we achieve what many think or thought it was impossible from chandrayaan to the rise of private launch vehicles like vikram and i would personally like to congratulate uh, the team member from uh, skyroot on this momentous uh, achievement and capability uh, you know which we are proving at the global stage however we must look from within with a great deal of honesty and urgency i'll give you a small uh, a kind of an uh, a fact which we need to ponder on in 2002 india saw 29 million births almost double china's 16 million birth the generation that is entering the workforce today in 2025 it is only 60,000 master degrees that in, uh, are from the engineering level graduates that India has produced. You know how, mu how much China has produced? Four lakh. They had a 40 percentage uh, deficiency in the number of people when compared to India. But they produced 7x the number of technical graduates and that is what is visible in China today. You know, one sky route we have done good kudos to them i i know what is the kind of struggle that they must have undergone you know basically i come from a missile background so you know very much understand what rocket technology is all about but why only one we must be producing this at scale that is the call that india needs to address this gap is not due to the political will or lack of talent it reflects a bureaucratic and techn technocratic inertia which has been built over decades. We celebrate remarkable achievements, and rightly so, but celebration cannot become a substitution for scale. That is something that India need to realize. Otherwise, the superpower status that we have so hardly earned to come to number three will be taken away from us in no time. Mind you, we were ruled by a country right. with few Fair thousand enough. soldiers. Fair enough. In Wing Commander Sadakar, we have run out of time, but I appreciate everybody who joined us on this important discussion. We take a short break. We'll be right back.